Late summer is when I pick hibiscus flowers. I like to dry them on my windowsill and then mix them with boiling water, lemon, and a hint of sweetness. The taste signifies to me the end of a long, hot season, and that soon enough it will be time for the autumn harvest. Today I thought I'd bring you along to my local bookstore and show you a bit about my work life. Wildfires have recently closed down the mountain pass that brings many of our tourists to the area, so it's an unusually sleepy place right now. I usually get breakfast in town, which is not a great habit, but it's just how it turns out some days. I'm currently working for 17 an hour because now I'm running the Instagram page from my bookstore, which is an added responsibility. So I have just unlocked the store and what I'm going to do is walk around and look and see whatever needs to be tidied up before the store is officially open and then I need to go check out the back, overstock anything else that is needed to be done. I might do a little bit of dusting and if I have extra time I may just reorganize some things or alphabetize which is an ongoing very necessary part of working at a bookstore. Books get out of order quite quickly and so I think since the store is looking quite neat that is probably what I'm going to do now so I'm gonna go alphabetize and if you're like me and you have to sing the ABC's under your breath the entire time then it will be a lengthy process so I'm gonna start in fiction and see how it goes and soon enough in about an hour or so we will be ready to open It's a pretty routine focused job with a lot of cleaning and tidying, and I like it that way. Some might see it as boring, but I find it calming. Now and then I get to talk books with the customer and that is always a treat. Iger would like you guys to take a moment to appreciate his bandana because he's looking very handsome today. Aren't you? Aren't you looking handsome today? Yeah? So one of the perks of working at a bookstore is that you get, of course, a discount on the books in the store, but more importantly, you get advanced ebooks, audiobooks, and paperback books. So how it works is that publishers send paperback books and also give access to audiobooks and ebooks 
months, sometimes even a year ahead of time of the official release date of a book. This is so to give a chance for booksellers and other book connoisseurs to uh, get early access and be able to submit some reviews and some early feedback to the author and their team. For example, this is a stack of advanced readers' copies that we got in the mail not too long ago. Alice Hoffman's The Invisible Hour has now been released, but we got an advanced readers' copy uh, months ago, so we were able to read it ahead of time and be able to give a review. As an artist and dreamer, I like to romanticize my work no matter what I'm doing, at home or at the bookstore, but it's important to note that it's a job like any other. Some days I'm tired and make mistakes. Not every day is perfect, but every day is meaningful, and there's always something I can take away from it to be grateful for, so I've come to accept those ups and downs. After the store closes, I'm usually pretty tired and looking forward to getting off my feet, so I go home to dinner with my husband, Come spend on. time with my pets, and hopefully read a bit before bed. I hope you enjoyed this little day. It is not super exciting. My work life is not that exciting, but it does mean something to me, so I thought I'd share, and I hope it brings you a moment of peace this evening. All in all, it was a wonderful day, and I did just get home, thankfully, because it's full summer right now. It's still very bright out, so I thought I would show you some of the books that I brought home today. So I will start with ARCs, which again are advanced readers' copies. All these books here are for free. They were sent to us as booksellers with the hopes of us reviewing them. However, they are very old. All these books have already been released and sold. So these are just some old ones that were lying around. So I thought I would show you. The first one is The Road of the Lost. It is about Croy, who is a brownie and she is a fairy creature. It seems very adventurous, maybe a tinge dangerous, and it has a lot to do with curses and invisibility and glamour spells, so I think it sounds uh, quite exciting. This is a very old book. It came out several years ago, I think, at this point, but it's The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Nettle Stone. This is about a very precocious young girl who is left instructions to go on this adventure in a will from her parents, and she has to go and it is just a nonsensical, hilarious adventure. The last free paperback I picked up was The Waking Forest. It had a bit of a daunting cover to me. I am not a spooky, scary, horror, you know, book reader. However, this book did seem intriguing, so I thought I would give it a go. It is about a witch who lives in the forest, who sits on her throne of carved bone, waiting for dreaming children to beg her to grant their wishes. So that seemed intriguing to me, so we're gonna try to step out of our comfort zone a little bit. I don't quite understand what has changed in me as a person and as a reader. I used to really enjoy kind of darker stories, stories about horror, true crime, things like like that. I enjoyed those things a lot more when I was younger. Perhaps it's because I've had actual scary experiences in my life and, and that kind of put a damper on a lot of that. It just didn't make it seem fun at all anymore. It just brought up fears I have. That is not at all a criticism if you like dark and scary stories. If anything, I have a lot of respect for you because I, I'm just, I am a cinnamon roll. I also ordered in two paperback books that I thought sounded quite exciting. I like to use the library when I can, but these were not available at my local library, and I've been really wanting to read them, so I wanted to also support the authors, because the first one is Tony Ditter Lizzie's Kenny and the Book of Beasts. It is the second book in the Kenny and the Dragon series, and I thought it was just such a charming story with beautiful illustrations. He's one of my favorite artists of all time, and so I felt like I just had to support his most recent work. 
Also, I picked up Echo North by Joanna Ruth Meyer. I don't know too much about the story, only that it was recommended to me by several people. It seems like the, a lot of those magical winter frozen rural area vibes, which is what I live through for four, five, six months out of the year. So I thought this would be a perfect winter read. Changing genres quite a bit, I picked up the second book in the series of The Big Panda and the Tiny Dragon by James Norris. Bur Norbury, Norbury, Norbury. It is about two adorable characters named Panda and Tiny Dragon, <laughs> and they have so much wisdom and beautiful insights into their world. In this story specifically, Tiny Dragon is trying to find greater meaning in his life. He feels stuck and unsure of kind of how to find fulfillment, and so they go on a journey together. If you love the book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse, this is a very similar one. The last book I picked up was The Green Wild by Pari Thompson. It had a beautiful design on the front and it seems to be about the society of magical botanists where plants are very peculiar and have magical qualities. They can grow and shape and plants are sentient in this story and it has these beautiful whimsical illustrations. So I am very, very excited to uh, uh, finish reading it because I've already started. I'm already about 88 pages in. <laughs> Last but not least, I picked up not a book. <laughs> so I got a deck of information cards about plants. And so you have the picture of the plant and on the back you have all this information of the plant, not only the history, but also the symbolism about harvesting it, how to use it. For example, this is purslane. These illustrations are by the herbalist Elizabeth Blackwell, who is a fascinating person. And I think she's an incredible artist. All right, so those are the books I brought home today. I do not bring books home very often as a bookseller. I have developed a sense of self-control for sure, but this was a special event, so I thought I would grab some titles I've been keeping my eye on. Thank you all for the support of this channel through my Etsy shop, and I hope that if you stop by the bookstore, you will say hello if I happen to be there. And sending you so much love. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.